Welcome to Foundry. My name is Nilaus, and this is a showcase of a new game called Foundry. It is in early access. It's actually in pre-early access. It's uh, available on itch.io and it will come to Steam as early access later on. So check it out on either of those platforms. The short description of this is that it's a voxel-based factory builder. Uh, so taking things from Satisfactory and Factory and merging it together. Currently there's no story in the game, but uh, I'm, as I understand it, that will be added later. And since this is early access or even pre-early access, then there might be some things that are unfinished or subject to change by the game develop as the game develops. And also this is an indie game, but made by a small team. So keep that in mind as we evaluate it. If you're interested in this game and would like me to show more, then uh, you know the drill. Liking, sharing, subscribing always makes a huge difference, not only to the algorithm, but also to me to sort of gauge the interest on whether there is a continued interest for this game to look beyond what we call a first look. And this first look idea is actually turning into a bit of a concept here on the channel. So check out the playlist for more first looks of other games and feel free to suggest more games in the comment sections. Let's dive into the game. And we're coming into the game, so you can see this is a voxel-based game. And uh, if you look at the sky, the sky looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, here we have also the map. We're starting with the map, and we have uh, sort of the proverbial copper and iron. They are called Xenoferrite and Technum in this case. So we start by mining it. That's the first thing. We've been told that we should mine the task in the top right-hand corner. They're super useful for getting you started. Uh, just uh, it, it lasts exactly as long as you'd want to get. So we get our tech Xenoferrite, we get our Technum here as well. And once we just mined out uh, all of these uh, little nuggets on top, all of the stuff below can also be mined, but uh, that's kind of what we want to mine more automatically. So what we have here is uh, we'll try to build the base between these and we're going to start by taking out some of the trees that are sort of in the place that place that we want to build our factory. And so we mine some biomass. This will of course be needed for burners as we progress. And we just need to clear a lot more. Once we cleared some space here, we can now start making the first manual uh, miner or manual uh, uh, smelters. They are very primitive smelters. That's what they're called. And uh, we are just going to put them here. You can either right click them from your inventory or you can uh, put them on your hotbar as well so we're going to make four of these two for each of the products we're just going to plop, plop them down here and we are going to assign them so here's another really cool thing there's no sort of uh you don't open it like inside factory but it has a panel on the side so you can actually work work on uh, interact with machines directly without actually being uh, without actually going into a another overlay so here is it's it's super nice and i think that's a, a clever change of, uh, of of pace here from uh, what we used to it does mean that i'll usually hit escape to get out of this uh, field which is, is not gonna work so we built two for uh, the plates and two for the rods yeah xenoferrite plates and technum rods that's it it's gonna be plates and rods let's uh, keep uh, keep it simple as that so now uh, we need to accrue it. We need to use the stuff that we have. And in the meantime, I'm going to be clearing out some space uh, here in this area, just uh, knocking down some paws and stuff like that. And now we have a, in the middle of the night, I'll try to only work during the day because the night is pretty dark and uh, full of terrors. We are going to build the first foundation. Uh, things need to be built on foundation if they require power because foundation is using power or no, it's not using power, it's transmitting power. That means no power poles for just ordinary things being connected. You will only use uh, power poles and electric wire for high voltage things later on. But that means uh, small things, as long as you put them, put power on the grid, then everything is that's connected to the grid is powered. Thank you. Fact satisfactory, do that as well. The way we're going to be mining is uh, through a drone miner that we are currently crafting. That is crafted now and we need to get a, find a way to get up here. And we're actually going to just use some, some of the dirt we've been digging out. I'm trying to level the, level the area just a bit. So we've been digging out some dirt and then we also have some more dirt and we can make these nice voxel cubes, very Minecraft-esque. And we are now making the miner, just right clicking here from overlay and we have it and you can see that it lists where the panel is and we built let's build them next to each other good so they don't work because there's no power so what we need to do is we need to craft a biomass generator and uh, then we can get to put some biomass in there and you can already see that we are going to need a lot of this foundation uh, at the current moment a foundation is pretty damn expensive 
and it's probably somewhere 60 to 80 percent of your resources in the entire base that goes into producing foundations for the base that's a lot and it's something that personally i hope that's changed it is early access so a lot of things can change and this is the kind of feedback that i'm sure the developers are looking at uh, because the rate of expansion is often dictated by the availability of resources that go into the foundations so i built two biomass burners there's not really any reason to build two at this point i just built two here this is the grid. It looks very simple, but it actually has like a nested tree structure that is uh, super nice. And we can get a bit into that a bit later on. So here we have the, the way it works is that each of these have four drones. They go out, come back and uh, yeah, then they will be, uh, uh, they'll be mining and we can then pick them up from there. Uh, we are also going to build expand our base here the first thing we want to do is actually get a smelter so now we get instead of having this primitive smelter where we need to put things in manually we can actually see you can see we are we are constrained very much by our available uh, build here so we want to make sure that we have here is a smelter it's an automated smelter you can see it has ports on every single side which is really nice and really convenient and then we can these have also have ports so we can just uh, the way it works is that if we go and then we have loaders they are basically inserters and belts are basically belts uh, the loaders can uh, it's a very clever way they look really big but they're they're working quite neat and uh, you have to toggle them between input and export they will always by default be import and uh, you can see they change to orange if they are export exporting so this will now be here. Unfortunately, I placed this uh, in a bit of an annoying way so that over on this side is where I have the panel. I could rotate it. You can't mirror things, but you can rotate things. So we're just going to be making a little uh, location here. Again, using the dirt just to climb our way up. And we're going to drill away the tree. And we should be able to get up. And I still can't see anything. Ah, I'm not going to be jumping. This is silly. So we'll try one more time, get built a bit bigger here. And now we can interact, we can set the configure the smelter and we can then say that we want to make it Xenoferrite plates tier one. And then we can also come here and then pick it up as we uh, as we need it. So now we have actually automated mining going on a belt, going into an automatic smelter. So that's really nice. The other one is not hooked up yet. So we can uh, we still use some of the old ones, just really easy as well. Since you have these panels on the side, then you can just import, export. We use uh, these foundations as our way of transferring uh, power. We will build this into an entire base. So it doesn't really, it's. I just need them to connect it so I don't need to have two different locations with um, with power poles. And that's what we do here. Oh, it's, sorry, two different locations with two different uh, power plants. So we just connect it. As soon as it's connected, that means this area here is now also powered. Uh, we have a deconstruction, a bulk deconstruction, which we then can deconstruct more at a time it's really nice that you can do that because uh, otherwise it just takes a long time when you make mistakes and i have been known to make mistakes so here we're going to be uh, making two more drone miners at this location so that we can uh, also get just a bit of the technum into our little production so it's you know it's basically it's very much like factorio at this point we are building something and uh, there's always a balance about how to build it or building it too small or too big in the beginning just need to find that right balance and you can see they are powered immediately and we can see the little drones the or the protoss probes that seems very much like they have uh, used the protoss probes so this is our area you can see that all the brown areas the place that i have leveled so preparing for our base and we are now leveled even more and it's uh, coming over and now we can go on with the next next part uh, the next part will be actually looking at some smelters. We want to get a bit more structured smelter array set up for primarily our xenoferrite because that's what we need the most of. Uh, no, sorry, it's not actually that part. It's the we're actually building a lab at this point. Lab does not require any power, so we can also place it just on the dirt, which is nice because it is a huge building. We're just going to be rounding things up here. 
And then we have a space now for there. That space we have there is where we're going to place our science lab. Science lab, no. Science lab tier one, that is. And if we. So we can rotate it. You can see there are four inputs, and I want those inputs on facing us out of the way. And I'm going to put it as far as close to the edge as possible. There we go. So we now have the research lab here. You can get it. You can get some inputs where we make some science packs and go in here. All of these things are very familiar to, to us. The first thing we need to do is uh, actually upgrade it. This is just like the skeleton. We need to upgrade it with some xenophorite plates, some machinery parts, and some wire cord. Those are things that we are crafting. We'll just uh, start the handcrafting here, and then we can do some other things while that uh, completes. So build all of these uh, wires and also all of the machines parts as well. So now that we have uh, collected all the parts, it is time for us to complete the build and just clicking here and finish construction, it completed. So now we can actually get high voltage energy and a science pack one. And our task is to research battery small. Battery small is basically a, an accumulator. So that goes well with solar panels. Solar panels and accumulators is what we are going to be using for power for the majority of, well, actually from now on, we want to get away from those biomass burners. Here is the information database. It's super nice to have these kind of things. And here's also a overview of the high voltage, how that works. We'll be showing that once we've collected all the materials for the high, high, uh, high voltage, keeping that as a separate network. At this point, we also have to do the Technum. Technum is currently not built at all. So uh, we do very desperately need to get something going just a little bit for our, for our smelter, for the, the Technum. And we'll put another one. Input and input. And then we need to build. Let's see how big it is. And it will be hanging out over that area. There, that should be enough. And then we can build the smelter that will be placed here. And that already is going to help tremendously with our setup. This is just to, to get some kind of, of automated building here. As you can really see here, we are really constrained about our uh, our foundation and that's what limits what we can build, where we can build it. Uh, we need to have these two accumulate, wait for the morning, and then I have built, expanded expanded the, uh, the, the foundation a bit and then we can then now start making something that's more structured that can last us a bit longer as well. And I want to have two spaces here on the side. There we go, two spaces. And this will now be for scaling up our Xenoferrite. And then we'll make it into a boss build. This will be trying to get a boss build going because I think that it's the right way to do this kind of thing. Yep, I will be heading escape a lot when trying to get out of these menus. All right, so what we need to do is we need to grab stuff uh, from this location. We don't need you anymore. Uh, so we can just deconstruct it. You get all the resources back upon deconstruction. So no problem there. And these two, well, let's just take one of them over first and then we can figure out what we want to do. Uh, we also want to definitely make some more drone miners at that point. So we just get it over. And then you rotate it and get it all the way in. You have to stop one before you're where you are because the turn has to be Turn the other way, and I think that's gonna be correct. So we can get some loaders to actually import things into the machine there. And that's actually getting all of that inbound. What we're going to do now is try to figure out that may maybe we can put this into a little box instead. Uh, each of those that are actually just not really supporting a full belt. A full belt is 160 per minute, not second, huh? 160 per minute. And uh, yeah, well, we don't have that yet. So what we want to do is we want to make a, first of all, some more loaders so we can get stuff in. And we already have a logistic storage so we can get the loaders in and the loaders, get the other loader in. And then the question is just, you can see it starts accruing here. This is a really nice way of doing it. And then it'll be everything out here. So luckily those loaders, they don't really have a capacity. They just follow the belt, it seems. 
and now we have closer to a full belt gone out really nice that's the first uh, first setup and we can also just get a few things from this location if we really feel that that's uh, necessary while waiting for the belt to fill up and get all the way over here so now these are working and what we need to do is go over and grab some more materials or actually just take this out And actually this could have been left because we're gonna get do the same thing put it into a storage anyway but uh, maybe we'll just get it down here because we also need to do the same for Technum and the way we do it is we copy that and we want all of those signals so here is the idea it has to be there so it's right across from the other one. So you can see we're trying to make some kind of, <clears throat> of structure in terms of just scaling up a bit with this uh, this base. And uh, it gives, hopefully this also gives you a, a sense of how the game plays because in, make it, in the beginning, you can sort of feel a bit lost about the way that belts are drawn, but it's actually quite intuitive. And these loaders are quite good, I'd say. They're, they're very easy to work with. Um, and just how many inputs and outputs there are on these locations makes it incredibly easy to actually get this working. Ah, out of belts. Luckily, belts are something that's easy to make. We also need to get a few more loaders just to, just because. So we can get that out here. And we'll also be needing to remove bulk deconstruction. It's really nice when it works. I mean, it, it works. It's just... Yeah, it, it's just you can actually I didn't, I didn't accidentally uh, deconstruct too much. All right, so we need to get our the, these two belts connected so that we can actually get things going here. And this is when I probably think that it's a good idea. Well, okay, we'll do this first. Yeah, that's fine. No storage for, for this yet. Technum is not used very much. And again, you can see our constraint is very much the fact that we don't have foundation. So we can only make like a very, very small little belt out here. So let's grab the materials for each of these two. Right now they don't have any place to get out, but we can grab it. And then we can uh, build some more loaders and some more belts for hopefully as well. And also tons of belts. So these are now coming out here. There will be one space between them on my little bus. And that will be the start of the bus build. We are going to expand that much further as uh, as we go along. But it's just to get, the, get things started. It's the transition between the early game and just kind of the manual stage and then trying to get some automation going. I think it's super important to get as much automation going as possible, as fast as possible in these kind of games, because then you can figure out all the other things and then everything will work in the meantime. So here you can see the toggle for toggling that they're now being output and they are luckily a different color. Excellent. We have now a the first little start of our bus. It's not much, but it is our start of the bus. At this point, well, we uh, actually don't want to have it scale up just uh, being on the belt. But so we want to actually build it into some boxes here. And uh, here's a clever way to do this in a super easy way. And if I can just get it, we will... Quick exit. There, we'll get inbound, outbound. And then we'll toggle... This is outbound and this is outbound. So it will continue to flow on the belt if it can, but if it, any excess will go into the storage boxes. So that uh, just makes it a lot easier. We are already uh, pretty, because of all the foundation we need, we uh, also seeing that we need to expand our, our alien, alien Xeno, no, our Xenoferrite. Yes, that's what it's called. Um, and we'll expand it to this location, just a little nighttime expansion. Get that sorted and still hitting escape all the time. Get those inbounds and then we need a lot more mining over at this location. Luckily, we can just take additional miners and then uh, hook them up to that location. 
and we bring it in. So belts are working really convenient in this case. I think they are super easy to place and that's something that's very important because you're going to be building it. We're also going to start working in multiple levels soon enough. But right now we stick to one level because, well, there is no need for doing anything more than that. And then we need to get our outputs as well. And that should be a full belt output in uh, in this case. Once this is rolling, if it gets two full belts in, then it'll get one full belt of iron plates out. And that'll be sort of all we can expect to get in a, in a base such as this right now. And of course it's not working because we forgot to toggle. Yep, remember to toggle. So we're going to get some additional miners set up here. Just add more drone miners, get lots of those going. So we now have two fully saturated belts coming out of uh, out of the little storage box. I'll just delete that. Looks kind of in the way. Makes it easier for the drones to go up and down. And of course, since I build them at this level, then they're going to have to spend a bit of time flying up and down. Looks, looks really nice. Like four of those, two on the other side. We'll just add two more whenever we feel like it. And we can now go to our logistics containers here for just picking up some iron and some rods. You can see the rods are not being consumed right now very much. That will be changing once we get a bit further. We've also been pushing back, back the wilderness and we can then start working on pushing, uh, pushing everything forward in this base. Now we will be uh, starting to look at power because as we build now we have six smelters going and a lot of the drone miners. We are probably going to run out of power soon-ish. So uh, we'll be going up here and uh, completing the research for the small battery. And then we'll be looking at the other research we have here. That's the small battery. We research it. And then we can have a look at that completed immediately and we can then look at the other thing conveyor distributor is basically a splitter and that's super necessary for what we need just a lot of other things there are some convenience things like lights and railings and stairs and signs but there are also some uh, a few uh, useful ones and this uh, is lab tech true this will get us up to the next tier and you can see the tech tree as it is right now uh, there's definitely a lot of things to do here and we'll definitely not go through all of this in this episode but you know it's uh, considering how early access it is or it's not even early access it's kind of pre-early access it's not on steam early access yet then uh, i think there's this seems like there's quite a lot of things to do which is nice and um and it's always being expanded so what we do now we are building some solar panels and some batteries as well we're going to some power poles we're going to build some uh, wire yes we're going to need that and then we're going to build some location here i will deliberately make this location not connected to my base build uh, so that we can see the effect of what happens or how you can connect the different builds to each other and then get the power across we'll start by making uh, the solar panels out here missing building foundation so let's uh, move it a bit in so it is actually on the platform that we have uh, planned for it no grid connections it just needs a power pole and uh, we're going to be building some power poles here um, but first, let's just crank down. We have six solar panels and six batteries as well. So let's get those sorted in the, on this location. There. And the batteries. First, we need a bit more space. Still being careful not to connect them. It's not that we are not allowed to connect them, but I want to show how it works when they are not connected. our batteries now again no grid connection because they're not connected to power poles so we'll take our wire and you can see these have actually uh, wire locations on them we're gonna need that little thing here for a transformer to transform the power to go in and out of this location ah we don't we want to because we both need to transform it up and down um yeah get that sorted and build another transformer so what we need to do now is build some power poles we're gonna need more of those
interestingly, if you place, okay, now we can see here, uh, this just says one solar panel and that's on a separate uh, electric network. Once they connect, we'll see how it looks and it's pretty convenient. When we use the wire and click on a power pole, it instantly sort of selects, assumes that you want to go further. That's a nice, very nice thing. You just need to get used to it. Uh, but if you don't, then that happens. So connect A to B, A to B. So now all of these six are connected and we are going to get to a sort of consolidated location at this point. And then we'll be going into get the power. And the last two will also obviously be powered. There. Now, at this point, we are going to build a transformer here so we can yeah, sort of get a sense of what we have and then transform it out. Connect it. And if we look at the grid status now, we can see that the batteries are filling up. 1.8 megawatt is being poured into the batteries and the megajoule value is increasing. Uh, the ratio, I don't have any clue about it, so we just built 50-50 on, uh, on the ratio. Here we're going to do another transformer. This is now on a different network. So when we get things in on a high voltage wire, wire like this, then we will need to transform it or use the transformer to get it into uh, into the network. You can't just, yeah, you have to get a, a transformer up here. So now you can see that it's connected. We have the high voltage grid and that's connected into uh, Technically, two networks. I guess it's because of the transfer, the other transformer as as well. But here we have all the consumers on the base location. So this is pretty convenient if you have a power plant that's far away. I don't know, maybe geothermal or something like that. It could be other things that are nearby. Uh, what we're going to do though is we're just going to connect it so that we have a single uh, power network instead. And as we build it. And connects, and then we'll have a single power network with the high voltage grid, the transformer that can carry five megawatts into the network, and that's plenty for what we need. And then look at that, the biomass generators are turning off at that point. So we are also just adding a few more, just doubled it up off camera because, well, it's not that exciting connecting wire. Take that satisfactory. And here we have a, now a new design for our bus. I want to uh, use a bit more verticality and what we're going to do is we are going to use all those uh, here. Um, what we want to do is we still have this research, the conveyor distributor. So we go in and complete the research. Ta-da! And we can then get the next one, which will be a long-handed loader. Seems reasonable. And we're going to go back now. We're going to use the splitters in a quite efficient manner uh, to actually build some sort of stuff. We want. And look and see how much we have actually have accrued here. Very nice. And we'll be building more. We need another 30 for the, the loader, the second lane loader. And what we're going to do now is uh, build. We now have assemblers and we've uh, gotten some of those. Yeah, of course, we always need to get something else. We need, of course, to get some of the new. Uh, of some of the new splitters as well and then a few more assemblers and maybe even some logistics storage here and then we can go back to get the other part we'll probably need to redo that a few times so the way the word we're going to do it is we are going to use our splitter first so the splitter will be built here and then we'll uh, remove those two and then we'll build it on top you don't have to build it like this. Um, yeah, okay, excellent. And then remove the one below. You can connect it directly up there, but uh, right now I'm just doing it this way. So right now that you can see the split, then we do the ramp down and we use an inbound here. So now we have a split off the bus, very convenient. And we leave it at the ground level because uh, if we leave it at ground level, then it can also just more easily get in and out of this location. So it's trying to, to use some interesting ideas for our um, for our bus, doing it a bit different, using some of the things that Factorio doesn't have because it doesn't have verticality. And we're going to build it there maybe. And then we're going to make an assembler. 
and that will be placing it here. The first thing we want to make is machine parts because machine parts is the one of the core parts that we need for pretty much everything. We need it for uh, need it for science parts and we need it for belts, I think. And so let's get those sorted. And we can uh, then eventually later on uh, double it and make it bigger. So I will build it like this, so branches in, so we can extend it outwards from the bus. Then I can take it back towards the bus here. That will be output, that will be input, and then the output. We'll toggle the output, output, and we see them coming in. They're going to be put into the box, and they will start filling up with machine parts. Now we go easily underneath. branch and change it to an up up ramp and then we have it on the bus we have a third line on the bus so basically i'm going to be adding things to the far side from where we are uh, additional lanes and then we're going to have factories standing on this side it's just i think that's a pretty good uh, compromise on on how to do it and then we can add more lines as we go along and we also need to of course level the terrain uh, put some more uh what are they called foundations out there and then we'll build the next one so next one i'll be making that as copper wire we'll just get it to here it's well it's not copper wire it's called technum rods now technum rods we have we took the technum rods and we turned that into wire coils that's what we wanted So what we need to do is we need to do a branch. And then we realize the mistake, the error of our ways. Because we need to slope down. And that means it can't be placed as close. But luckily things, as long as you can do that, you can use the Q button like in uh, in factorial satisfactory to point at things and then just grab a copy of whatever that is which is super nice for building these kind of things so again that goes back uh, that will be one more thing on the bus and the intake rotate and get it and now there's a little problem because we have iron plates coming in and we should not have had iron plates. We should have had uh, iron rods. So it's actually this wrong one I took here. And we'll need to do a, a splitter at that location instead. So that's one and then the splitter on top and remove the lower one. Okay, and we then connect. And it's just easier to remove this than trying to get pick things up from the bus here. And that's now ramped down. Just getting the used to the mechanics here. And inbound. There we go. Is it working? We now get the Technum rods coming in. And they are not moving because we don't have a recipe yet. And we need to go in. Take the recipe. And that will be... Like that. All right. One more thing sorted. One more thing going back up here and uh, getting added to the bus. So this ba this game is um, even more chill than any of the other games. There's no upkeep. There's no uh, biters. There's no nothing that prevents you from just going materials don't get lost they are not infinite it seems but i'm not uh, sure you can also constrain the logistics containers maybe satisfactory should add that kind of thing as well would be nice and yeah so things are just super chill if you leave it here you can just come back and when more is happening uh, that's what i'm basically doing every time it gets evening then i just uh, mind uh, harvest some trees during nighttime so we can continue in the morning we're going to get some more research. We haven't done the research yet, but we'll we'll need to get that. Get some building blocks. And then we can get another research or another design out here. Take the lower one. Uh, 
and that will be inbound. And then I'll have now two inbounds because the next thing we want to build is going to be the blocks. And that actually needs us to have two things inbound, both the Technum rods and the plates, the Xenophorite plates. Yeah, you. and we remove the lower one. Good. Well, that's going to give us a potentially a challenge. We can we can work around that for now. And here yeah, you can see how much space we actually take. We're already now bumping into into the forest again. But luckily everything can be terraformed, and that's really nice because uh, that just makes it a lot simpler. Now we're just going to remove it. So it's easy to get two belts into one location if you only want one. But if you need like multiple next to each other, then it's yeah, it, it doesn't quite work. We'll take that out, get some conveyors. That should be good. And we'll still go back and just assume that we can build more of those. And this is like a really nice, we can now start using these storage boxes we have available and then get more stuff because, well, science packs need need a lot of uh, machine parts. Now let's set the recipe so we can get things done. That will be the foundation blocks, building blocks. And still not escape to get out of that. And this one will not go on a bus, at least not yet, but it'll be put into a container so that we can always come back. And now we're just slipping off the off the platform here. And drill that out. And we need some more here. Input, but no output. And click it. And look at that. We got building blocks automated. That is wonderful, isn't it? That's something that's going to be really, really useful for us to, to have. Let's get uh, at least 1,000 sort of in storage. That should be nice. So things will just happily keep going. Okay, so we have now done a few things here. And what we can, of course, continue to think. The next thing we want to do is probably just automating the science. It seems like that's a really nice thing to do. We're going to be, of course, clearing the forest, making some some more progress out there and then uh, we also need to upgrade our technum production as we uh, we move forward now we have uh, we still have our building blocks but we've now cleared up some more space behind us so we can continue on more design work so we get two in this will be the inputs for the science and we get the assembler but we're going to need two assemblers for this. And I want like them to be sort of have two spaces between. And it doesn't feel too crowded when you try to move in here. Throw it away yet another annoying tree. We'll just make this little platform. We'll eventually split it out. But I want to show how it's done when we have multiple builds here. Because that's going to make it just a little bit more tricky. And then we need to get... That will be... The science. So that is machine parts and it's what was the other thing? There. Yeah, the technum rods and the machine parts. Good. Take those two out and we can now see you are actually able to snap it up directly at the top. Oh, I didn't do that. I just clicked it on top of each other. But you can, you can. I think it's uh, we will probably try that on the next one. Here, that goes to machine parts. And let's try, there we go. Still not. I do believe it's possible to, to stack that up. I'll go into the next, here, and here. So now we have a problem. How do we get the long ones? Well, that's why we have the long-handed inserters are being loaded. Long-headed loaders being researched. That's what it is. We have our one line for running here. Let's get that done. There we go. And we can get some more research. That could be inventory or yeah, it could be mining speed. We'll get mining speed. I do a lot of nighttime mining while uh, running around. We're now back here uh, for our um, 
Where's the gold? Yeah. Our science facility. Yes. And we need a belt out. Good. And... Unfortunately, you can't really place it like that. And then just really far down there. Excellent. And then we need the inputs as well for the long-handed ones. They will go in and they will be fitting just right there on our map. And that's kind of incorrect. We'll rather have it here. And then we set the second recipe. So now we have an automated build for science. We have it. It's only producing two per minute and we have two of those. So it'll be four per minute. So we can get science done pretty quickly at this point. And we're going to follow the belts all the way over. Just uh, have a look at waiting until morning and uh, just have a look at what it looks like. Go back here. See the production. This is the giant area that has now been cleared during the night. Wanted to just illustrate how big it is and again how many 24 22 times 25 so more than 500 just burned in uh, burned like that and there so now we have a good working space and what we're going to do is we are going to follow it looks pretty good this is pretty nice we're just going to follow this uh, science line all the way back. And what I had to do was I need to take the science lab and just move it one tile up because it needs to, of course, have an input at the same level here that is powered. Otherwise, the loader doesn't work. And then we will get it. You can see the top right hand corner. The research for the mining drill speed is progressing pretty damn fast. So there's no sort of processing speed. It's just as fast as you can get it in there. That gets us onwards to more design. Uh, the one thing that we don't have designed at this point, here we go. We got our research completed and now we can, well, for example, inventory would be nice to get. And we can also get the research lab, which we'll get that afterwards. But the, right now we have a research, inven research inventory size is just progressing at a rate of four science packs per minute. Very nice. What we don't have is the electronics. So we'll just get another line in here to get the electronics. We'll just make you with just a single, uh, a single assembler for that. And that requires tech and rods and also getting some additional wire. Now with the tech and rods and wire, that's both coming from the same location. So that means we are right now going to need a lot more tech and rods than what we have before. Again, it just kind of uh, shifts and there we go. No, not quite there. It's, the, it's probably the last one that I figure out how to get it right. That one. I really like this, uh, this idea of using the hop at the higher level. And there we go. Without building one below, we actually make one up top. It works. So that's probably how we should be doing it uh, generally. So there's some really good snapping here. And I think that's one of the advantages of making it a voxel based is that you can more easily, it doesn't have, to, it's not, doesn't have to be as much guessing in, uh, in satisfactory. There's a ton of guessing because things are not sort of always on the grid. And sometimes there's sort of pixel hunting, but that's the advantage of having, um, oops. That also needs to go advantage of having a voxel based and we just need to get it up and then we have the last thing we want to get on the bus right now you can see the inventory is uh, researching by itself we're gonna need another box and the usual inputs and outputs. I don't know if this is like ideal way of doing it, but it's kind of my way right now. And I, I think it scales pretty okay at this point. There we go. So we have the first few of these uh, electronics components. You could call them green circuits. They're not very green, but, but we all know they're green circuits. And it comes up on the bus. And again, as expand the bus as much as we can. Now we'll get the research research done 
and then we can then start working on the next research. That's gonna take a while, but uh, it's okay. We have a uh, we have a few things we want to do. We want to get all the way up here, and that's gonna be our sort of the conclusion when we get the next research tier and just have a look at what are the options we have at that point. Uh, so what we need to do now is well continue to let this run, and then continue to expand. Let's have a look at the base. So as the base here, you can see, I make, I, I do give a lot of breathing space in, the, in my factory for various things. I go out here, still need some, some clearance, but we do have a mountain over there that we're gonna bump into eventually. Now, as we, uh, as we are building, we completed the research for Tech 2 or the Research Lab 2. So we are now going to build a Research Lab 2. We'll build it out here. I've just uh, made a little dirt path out for us out there. And that should be uh, should be fine. We don't really need it for anything. It's a, it's it kind of feels weird that we need a second uh, lab instead of just having the same one that upgrades. But you know, that's it's how it's done. We're going to be again taking the loaders as close to us as possible. That seems like a good place to play, put it. And we're going to have to run all the way around it to uh, get to access. There is no room. Could have made it just one off so I could squeeze through, but that doesn't matter. Also, this is. Uh, not pretty so uh, we need to make sure that we have just a bit of a ledge to walk on and if, as you can probably see now there's no sort of falling down like in Valheim or anything like that uh, at this point we get building blocks 400 electronic component we're missing f135 and then we're missing also some all the other machinery parts so all we need to do now is go back and that's the cool thing about what we have is that we can just grab things from the belt. And we're going to get the electronic components as well. There's of course still a, a bit of running back and forth. So there's still some, there's definitely still some improvement to designs like this. And at this point we should be able to upgrade to Mark 2 or to Science Lab Level 2. And that gives us access to more research. We now can Research and the science packs level two. They're really expensive, some steel. And uh, then we can have a look at the different types of research we have available at this point. Uh, so you can see that it continues this game into well level two and then it's, it's more complex and we, it's pretty obvious that we're gonna need more. Uh, there's some better miners, there's some better smelters. There's a bit of better everything here. And uh, it's kind of what you can expect. We'll also be able to scan for more of the deposits so we can go out and expand and either build new locations for smelting or uh, drag it back here. So this is kind of, this is the first tier we're gonna be expanding up here. That's, it, it all makes sense. So just a little glance at our base. This is our power part. So we have our smelting of Technum. Over on the other side, we have our smelting of uh, Xenoferrite. And we have our bus, starting bus coming in here. And then uh, we have all the branches off the side of the bus. I think it looks really neat and also sort of from a gaming perspective i think that it it's it's very intuitive what they look like uh, just so basically if you uh, if you have liked this little showcase of the game then uh, be sure to hit the like button and if you want to keep up with where the game the game development then uh, you can follow it on steam and it's always a good idea to watch, to wishlist games on steam it's basically the like button for game development uh, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you wanted to watch more, then uh, check out the other first look videos in my playlist. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care and stay effective.